All right. Hey, how's it going this morning? This is the new 2020 Land Rover Defender. It just came out recently. This one is in Pangea Green. And it is, actually, you know what? Let's see if we can find a Monroney here. Maybe not. This one doesn't have one. All right, so we're gonna wing this. Some of the information might be a little off, but anyway. So this is the 110, 110 meaning it's got four doors. The 90 has two doors. Um, this one, I want to say starts at around 60 something thousand dollars. Um, like I said, Pangea Green. This has got the three liter V6, about 395 horsepower. It's kind of cool, you can see the, the uh, intercoolers in there. Um, there's a signature light thing. Let's see if we can get it to do it. I'm not gonna do the, oh yeah, there we go. There's that daytime running light, that signature there. And I guess there's like a little signature. Um, yeah, the lights in the back. Land Rover likes to show off. This one's got the two tones, so it's got the white on top. Um, we just did a thing and we had um, one that was all black. Um, this intake, or this is a functional air, either exhaust or in, I think an exhaust or intake. This one over here doesn't seem to be functional, just for looks. At least I can't find any function in it. Um, yeah, super cool, which I'll kind of show you. We'll go over the interior, but super cool. Oh, I just noticed this weird, like aluminum piece there. Um, super cool camera system that this thing has uh, that you can use off-roading. This one has this box. Uh, we had another one with the adventure pack i believe or explorer pack which has a snorkel and some other stuff on it i don't i don't know when you open this it's like um it's just a box with a net doesn't seem to be all that dust proof this one doesn't have the rear tire cover on the back which i kind of like uh, it's running a good year uh all-terrain adventure wrangler on it which seemed to be all right didn't have any issues with it ran with off-road pretty extreme off-roading and we did it with um without it taking air out of the tire so just to give you an idea um let's pop the hood real quick before we go to the interior it's got buttons to unlock it on all the doors let's see here get this popped open right there that's right so there's that six cylinder in genium that's their name for everything there um yeah pretty basic stuff under there nothing crazy uh it makes cool turbo whoosh noises when you're getting on the power like when you're getting on the freeway which is i always kind of like that when they accentuate the turbos um I have a Ford Ranger and you can't hear really any turbo noise to kind of take away of the turbos. So I'd rather, I'd rather hear the turbos personally myself. So yeah, there's that. Um, that's that tag. You can see three liter there, engine group. All right, let's go to the interior. Let's actually, we'll do the back seat. Back seat is pretty, uh, pretty spacious. It's got the skylights, as you can see there, which is kind of cool because uh, it lets natural light in all the time. Uh, these flip up, kind of like my, I had a forerunner to this, so when you fold the seats flat, they actually go completely flat. They're not sitting propped up by the bottom of the seat there. It has these, it looks like this is a mount of some sort and then a, a, for probably like a screen and then it has a, a USB port there. And then you also have power here more US, two USBs, two 12 volt, like um, cigarette lighter type. Is that what's nice, what I like, is there's no carpet. So it's all this, it's like good off-road uh, or ready for off-roading kind of material seat. This seat folds down and it's got a nice coating on the back of it that's nice and durable. 
Um, the seat material itself, itself pretty, seems pretty durable. They use this like Cordura kind of fabric here and then like with leather in the middle. It smells really good as you would expect from British luxury. Uh, we'll open the back here. It's an electric open back, which um, I don't know, a lot of electric. Here's a uh, power AC 110, 180 watts. Uh, there's a little net back there. This uh, for access, it'll raise and lower because this has the air suspension on it. So you push the button, it lowers it down. I'll, I'll raise it up and show you what it looks like with it in raised uh, suspension. This um, is a triangle for um, for opening the, uh, or for a uh, hazard triangle. What's also kind of nice too is they give you a foot rest here. Or, uh, so you can stand on this and then you can reach the, the roof rack really well. That's the roof rack up there. I'll even show you. There's a lot of detail on this one, I think. It is easy, but there you can see how kind of like it's pretty easy to undo that box if you want to take it off. Uh, so let's start. Let's start from here. We'll work our way across. I really like the exposed fasteners on the door panels. I really hope that that's how you take the door panel off, which I would see that that's how you do it. Uh, Meridian sound system in this one, you know, power up and down. Uh, automatic one touch up and down and everything. Uh, they even give you a grab handle over here and that, again they're using that the exposed fasteners all over the place which is nice. Again not carpet um, which I think is really nice. Power electric parking brake of course because everything does have that now. Um, just a cool rugged simple interior. Um, very minimal buttons but all the buttons serve an important purpose. So, uh, sender uh, visor there, and then you got your driver passenger visor. So let's um, fire it up. The, the engine has this cool note to it. It's almost like when I got it in, I drove off and I was like, is this a V8? Cause it almost has a rumble like a G wagon, uh, like the four liter by, uh, by turbo V8 in the G wagon. Uh, we're gonna close that door so you don't get these. Um, so yeah, uh, I was like, oh, is this a V8? And then the torque is really good. And so I thought it was a V8 for a while. And then I looked at the specs and it was, uh, it, you know, it didn't have, it doesn't even have a V8 option. So I was like, oh, that's pretty crazy. Um, digital screen, no analog gauges. I think that's that premium luxury thing they're trying to do. Uh, so I have it on this very basic, you know, two, uh, two dial thing there and you can go through and. Uh, I'm not going to mess with it right now because I think there's other more important things to show. But um, yeah, so this is like a grab handle too. I, apparently, what I saw on a video was that there's exposed. So this is the same dash in the Range Rover, but this one is exposed. So it has this exposed beam and that's apparently that's a magnesium beam under there. That's what they said. Um, this is, I know, optional. I think the other one is all black, but it feels cold to the touch. So I'm, I'm guessing that that is... Uh, Maybe this is also magnesium or, you know, something along those lines. This is like a rubber coating here. So very durable coatings and stuff to uh, climate control. Now, now the gauges, now these dials, not gauges, um, also double as other functional dials. So when you go to like, say, want the fan, you push that button and that goes to the fan and then you can turn it off. And then when that's illuminated, that means that that is for that button there. So when you want to change off-road modes, you push that button there. Now it pops this up and I can change my two on-road modes. And then you have grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts. Uh, it's gonna prompt you with a bunch of different things. Sand, um, rock crawl, wade, and a configurable one. I was running in the configurable one the other day because I could select and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, actually, you know what, I'll show you right now. I would go into here and I'd click that and then you'll see there, it kind of changes the center there. I go, con oh, it went away. So go here. Now, this is also a menu that you can go through. There's some cool stuff in here. Vehicle dimensions, I'll show you that in a little bit. So we go four by four I and I go, I understand because we're doing some different stuff now. And I go to configurable TR and now I've got all of these options. So I can put my differential. Do I want center limited, center slip limited, center and rear slip limited, automatic. I was running center slip limited, powertrain and responsive, uh, steering in medium and traction control with more wheel spin. 
because wheel spin and then you can take track i was you know tractor you'll see there's a whole thing coming out about that but um that's how i was running it so i like how you can like select different stuff kind of configured the way you want it um tr info that's uh terrain response uh gives you a little bit more in-depth info into all the different modes so you go wade there or uh let's see let's get it back oh. so it gives you an idea of what each one is going to do so like you can see there use when driving through water obstacles both on and off road uh and then tell you kind of what's going on because obviously that'd be pretty crazy now um because the vehicles now are set in you go to wade and it goes to off-road height so it raises the vehicle up shows you got 2.9 feet shows you where that line is going through there um not as easy as a g-wagon g-wagon what used to be the g-wagon the rubber piece going along the side was your wade depth this one doesn't have anything like that but i'm guessing where that air in or the intake is on the driver's side on this one uh you don't want to put water above into that so that's where that line is coming from now this will show you the angle and what looks like the pressures on each individual wheel plus how much is on so as i was driving through terrain the other day uh these were there's like little dials that'll show you how much it's locking and how uh and then it'll show you when it's fully locked so you can kind of have an idea so how i explain a land rover to people is that they don't want you to get out of the car right so this vehicle is gonna get you through a bunch of different off-road terrain and scenarios without you ever having to get out of the comfort of your luxury off-roader. That's how this works, if you want an idea. So now that we're in, so here, let's go over some of the buttons. Now that we're in the um, off-road height selected, now there's three different settings to the air suspension. We've got the off-road height selected, and we've got the normal, which we started in, and then we've got a low access setting. So now we're in off-road height. Let's get out. As you can see, a little bit higher. Don't know if it's that noticeable. It is noticeable to me. It is, you know, sits a little higher. And it does clear obstacles. It, I did, it did help me the other day to clear some rocks that were in the center. But that's that. All right, let's go, go back into normal. And this is how long it takes. It's going down and now now we're back to normal now i know in the cayenne when you go down in in a cayenne it does front rear front rear front rear, until it gets it down this one seems to kind of drop it a little bit um a little bit more together okay so now we're going to go to the full drop this is the access height selected if you saw in the in the gauge there now we're at access height <laughs> And that's pretty low there which you know gets you better access allows you to put stuff in the back a little bit easier and we're gonna go back into normal that does have a low range here that you have to put in neutral select it into normal now here's another cool thing this is also a g-wagon thing it has a it has a air defrost for the front but also has the element the wire element in the which i don't know if you can see i'm gonna try to get close there so you can maybe see it there's wire element in the so for ice icy conditions where the you need that heating element to melt the ice and then it also seems to have a film here which on pictures you could see there is a film on the front there all right so now that we've done all that um oh hill descent control there uh, to do heated seats you push this and that's going to give you your heated seat function there um and then this one doesn't have cool seat but they still have a blue thing which is kind of deceiving um yeah so you have that for the defroster go back to that for a second uh defroster there um for the element and then regular defroster so that's pretty cool i like that um shifter button on the back of the shifter there pull it down for drive over for sport when you go into sport uh, uh initially it's just an s if you hit the gear selector there, then you can select gears which is is nice i like it it's very easy to grab there um push button park as most things have nowadays uh your tilt for the telescoping is over here for the uh 
for the steering wheel instead of being on the left side. Now, let's do, oh, actually, let's go over some of the stuff here. Um, so there's this little cover. When I got on the other black one, there's just, this thing pops out and it goes where the cup holders are. And then you can pop that out and stick it down there. I'd probably always just have it down there. Uh, pretty good storage down there. And then this is like a water dust tight uh, bin for, you know, stuff you want to keep really um, kind of protected. There's another power outlet here. And then you got your C and regular USB there with another 12 volt. This is the data one. So that puts your Apple CarPlay and stuff like that. All right. Now that we're done with that. Oh yeah, sunroof. Cool. Um, now that we're done with that, let's go into this camera system on this car. So we go here. We got our parking aid not available there. I don't care. I'm gonna go into this. Look at this. Look at how selectable these cameras are. You can pretty much look at the whole vehicle. As you can see, it gives a pretty good idea of what and you can move around it and rotate. So when you're off-roading, you can literally see now. Things are kind of distorted in a way. You can see as it's stitching the image together, it doesn't do it. But for a camera system like this that I haven't seen on pretty much any other vehicles, that's pretty good. Uh, towing camera, so when you're backing up, you can see when you're backing up to a tow hitch, you can do that nice and easily. Um, so pretty cool camera system on this car. Looks like it has uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 12. 12 camera views, different select, I don't know if that means 12 cameras, but you know, 12 different camera views. Now, we'll just do a quick run through on some of these here. Eco data, not gonna be really too important in this. It does have a low traction launch. I didn't try that out, unfortunately. Didn't have time to do it. Um, it does have vehicle dimensions. So, when you are when you select, let's do the off-road one here, watch. When you select off-road height, it changes all of the uh, dimensions there. So now you can see what your updated um, degrees are for approach angle, departure angle, and your breakover angle in the middle there, which is kind of cool, I think, you know. Uh, yeah, but other than that, there you go. That's a quick, walk around run through on the Land Rover Defender. Um, yeah, I mean, any questions on driving and stuff like that? It drives very nice on road. What was nice is I drove it a pretty good distance on road and then um, did a bunch of off-roading, kind of hard on it all day um, for a little project we did and then um, drove it back and got to drive it around a little bit more and it was super comfortable no issues whatsoever no overheating no crazy diff problems or anything like that which i um i i, I enjoyed it was nice but uh yeah that's it and uh any questions put them in comments or anything like that i'll try to answer them as best that i can there is also a four liter turbo option in the base i i the way i would configure it is they have this one with steel wheels i don't know if they offer it in in the u.s Virgins, but I saw online they had this like two door steel wheel, like a white steel wheel. Just looked a little bit more classic looking. Because this one it tends to look a little bit more modern. The wheels on this one are, are not bad. The, the other one had this double five spoke thing on it. I don't know. The other one was a little bit too urban off roader for me. I like this one that looks like a safari vehicle. That's how, to me, a Land Rover should look. Um, so yeah, but that's it. Thanks for watching this video. Again, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them, I'll answer them. And uh, yeah, see you next time.